Good morning, my dear students. Here comes your teacher Joy uh, for the first module of quarter two. We have performing mensurations and calculations. But before we will have to proceed to this topic, uh, may I introduce to you the different objectives of this lesson. Number one is identify elements of computer system. Uh, next is identify the different computer components. And the last one is um, at the end of the lesson, you can give examples of its computer components. So shall we proceed? The first lesson is we have select measuring instruments. As a future computer system servicing students, you need to first is familiarize the different computer components that makes up a computer and identify those components that needs to be measured and calculated. So we have here first is you need to know what are the different elements of computer system. What composes or what makes the computer perform uh, task? One is there should be a hardware and another one there should be a software and of course there is a peopleware and the last one is there is a firmware for the computer to perform a specific task. Okay, by the way, what is a hardware? A hardware is uh, this is a component that includes the physical part of the computer system that can be touched or that can be manipulated. You can hold this hardware. The second one is a software. Software is a set of instructions that directs a computer's hardware to perform a task, which is called sometimes a program or a software program. Uh, even if you have a hardware, but in the absence of a software, um, computer may fail to perform a specific task. Then the third one is the peopleware. Peopleware refers to anything that has to do with the role of the people in the development or the use of the computer software and hardware systems. Of course, um, still, even if you have the hardware, the software, but in the absence of the peopleware or the human being that will manipulate the hardware and the software, uh, still you cannot perform a specific task that makes the computer uh, function. And the last one of its computer elements is the firmware. The firmware is a tangible electronic components with embedded software instructions. So meaning this firmware, these are the softwares that cannot be uh, changed unlike the software where you can install from time to time. Okay, so those are the different elements of computer system. Then a computer system is made up of four main types of hardware components. Though you have there the hardware, the software, peopleware, and the firmware, but still the hardware is being composed of uh, four types of components. Input, the processing, the storage and the output okay so those are the main types of hardware components so these are all hardware so we will focus on the hardware elements of the computer system so we will proceed to the input devices so as I said there are four input processing storage and output uh, components we will discuss them one by one, so you will learn better um, in order to internalize the lesson. Okay, so let's proceed to input devices. An input device is any hardware device, so I said this belongs to hardware. This is a hardware device that sends data to a computer, allowing you to interact with and control it. And Within these input devices, these are also classified into, uh, there are input, uh, input activities that are done through keyboard entry and there are also done by direct entry. And what are these keyboard entry and how are these direct entry done? So the keyboard entry example we have, 
can be done through the use of the keyboard. A keyboard is a peripheral input device modeled after the typewriter keyboard which uses an arrangement of buttons or keys uh, to, a to act as mechanical levers or electronic switches. Of course, uh, maybe all of us are very familiar to the keyboard. So let's not stick to this uh, example, but we will have to proceed. So as I said, this is an example of a keyboard entry using the keyboard device. The next one is the direct entry. So let us have examples of the direct entry. Number one, direct entry can be done using the mouse. So we have here um, the mouse. We have here the illustration. This is the meaning and this is the direct entry devices. The mouse, the image scanner, the digital cameras, and the joystick but we have here first the mouse a mouse is a handheld pointing device that detects two-dimensional motion relative to a surface so <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, designs of a mouse so this one is the one that I'm using the next one is the image scanner the image scanner is a device that optically scans images printed text, handwriting, or an object, and converts it to a digital image. So this is the uh, image or the picture of the image scanner. But this time, there are lots of uh, printers uh, which performs three-in-one, which one of those performances or features is it can uh, photocopy, uh, it can print, and of course, it will scan. So, scanner or the image scanner is not very new to us. So, let's proceed to the num uh, number three <clears throat> is digital cameras. Digital cameras is a hardware device that takes photographs and stores the image as data on a memory card. So, since my example is like this, but there's a lot of uh, devices that can be used to capture uh, images like our cell phones we can use them as our digital camera so number four is the joystick the joystick is an input device consisting of a stick that pivots on a base and reports its angle or direction to the device it is controlling so this one is an example of uh, this is the image of the joystick so I'll repeat, those input devices are considered to be direct entry, meaning without uh, typing, without encoding, uh, you, can, you can perform or you can have uh, entered an input through the use of those uh, devices that I have just mentioned earlier. The next one is, out of the four types of computer components, I repeat, there are input, storage, uh, processing, storage, and um, output. So we have just uh, discussed the input devices, and the input devices is categorized also into direct entry and the keyboard entry. So this time we have uh, storage devices. So the storage devices are also classified as temporary storage and the permanent storage or secondary storage first is we will have to tackle first what are temporary storage or what is a temporary storage and what are the examples of this temporary storage or what are the devices that belongs to temporary storage and so with the permanent storage or the secondary storage a temporary storage is the primary facility for storing data that must be available to multiple transactions or it is used to describe memory content that is lost when the power is interrupted or switched off. So meaning the data that are stored in that particular storage device um, will be unavailable after turning the power off. So that is a temporary storage. Then the second one, the second classification of storage device is the permanent storage or sometimes called as the secondary storage. It is any computer data storage device that retains data or retains its data 
when the device is unpowered. So meaning, even if the power is turned off, the data is still, still there. So that is a permanent storage. So the data that has been stored in that secondary storage or permanent storage must always reside in that particular device, not unless you have to remove or to have to permanently delete those data. Then, uh, let's proceed to an example of the uh, classification of storage devices, which is the temporary storage. A uh, first is memory. So memory is used when often to identify fast temporary forms of storage. When the information is kept in memory, the CPU can access it much more quickly. Most forms of memory are intended to store data temporarily. So let us take into consideration the different examples of temporary storage. Number one is read-only memory or the room. And this is the illustration of how room looks like. The read-only memory chips are located in the motherboard. Of course, it is found in the motherboard. The room chips contain instructions that can be directly accessed by the CPU. And the basic instructions for booting the computer and loading the operating systems are stored in the room. And room chips retain their contents even when the computer is powered down. The contents cannot be erased or changed by normal means. So, that is for the room. The second one is the random access memory or this is what we call as the RAM. And this is the illustration of the RAM. Uh, there are different versions of RAM. There are uh, DDR, uh, SDRAM. So, this is just a uh, very basic example of the illustration for the RAM. However, it looks uh, different in some other computers or in the variations of computers uh, you can use different uh, kinds of RAM. Random access memory is the temporary storage for data in programs that are being accessed by the CPU. <clears throat> RAM is volatile memory which means that the contents are erased when the computer is powered off. So that means or that is uh, the meaning of volatility or volatile memory, meaning the data is there when the, the computer is still uh, has power, while the data will be lost after turning off the power of your computer. So the more RAM in a computer, the more capacity the computer has to hold and process large programs and files, as well as it will enhance system performance so that is why when you <clears throat> purchase a computer one of the features or the specifications that you need to uh, consider is the uh, capacity of your ram so next is the sims and the deems sims s-i-m-m uh, single inline memory module and deems is uh, double inline memory module and sometimes we have also there the DDR as I said earlier uh, DDR is the RAM these are as uh, um, versions of RAM uh, SIMS or SIMM SIMMs have 30 pin and 72 pin configurations <clears throat> Then while the DIMM is a circuit board that holds SDRAM, DDR, SDRAM, and uh, DDR2, SDRAM. While the DDR or the double data rate technology doubles the maximum bandwidth of SDRAM, DDR2, which offers faster performance while using less technology. The DDR3 operates at even higher speeds than DDR2, of course. Uh, this is the next uh, version of the DDR2. However, none of these DDR technologies are backward or forward compatible. So, <clears throat> how does this DDR2, DDR3, or just the DDR, or the double data rate technologies differ from each other? 
is that if you look at the RAM itself, or yes, the RAM, the memory module, is that the slot of the memory, like this, um, they are not the same. So meaning, you cannot replace the DDR2 to the DDR3 as to <clears throat> in the substitution of using this uh, different RAMs in your computer. Okay, let's proceed. The next example of the temporary storage is the cache and registers. Caches are designed to alleviate this bottleneck by making the data used most often by the CPU instantly available. Registers are memory cells built right into the CPU that contains specific data needed by the CPU, particularly the arithmetic and logic unit. The ALO or the arithmetic logic unit is uh, the one responsible for the calculations or the computations of the different performance of your computers. An integral part of the CPU itself, they are controlled directly by the compiler that sends information for the CPU to process. This is the illustration or the picture how the registers looks like. <clears throat> okay, so those are the different examples of a temporary storage while we will have to proceed to the secondary or the permanent storage devices. Number one is the hard drive or the hard disk drives. These are the very common uh, storage device or permanent storage device is the hard disk drive. A hard drive or hard disk drive is a magnetic storage device that is installed inside a computer. Uh, maybe, although it is very familiar, uh, example or permanent storage device, the hard disk, but you are not uh, always, you cannot see this very often because uh, this hard disk drive is installed inside your computer. Not unless you have to open the system case, you can see this hard disk drive. So since you are a future computer technicians, sooner or later, so you can see all of the components inside your computer system. <clears throat> it is the hard disk drive or the hard drive is used as a permanent storage for data. So in a Windows computer or in a computer which uses Windows as your operating system, the hard drive is usually configured as the drive C. <clears throat> if you notice, in your uh, computer, when, when, when you open your computer, the computer or the folder, the computer folder in your computer, you can see drive C and drive D. There are uh, some others that will uh, have drive F, G. So those are for the flash drives and the CD-ROM drives or the optical drives. So usually if your computer is not partitioned, uh, if your hard disk is not partitioned, so usually the hard disk should be configured as drive C. And it usually contains the operating system and other applications. The hard drive is often configured as the first drive in the boot sequence. So this is um, uh, considered as the first boot or configured as the first, first drive in the boot sequence because the operating system is being loaded or being stored in this uh, device. So when reading your hard drive, the data must be accessed immediately by the uh, processor because it is the first in line with uh, all the uh, informations that are being stored in the hard drive. The storage capacity of a hard drive is measured in billions of bytes or gigabytes. The speed of a hard drive is measured in revolutions per minute or the RPM. Then multiple hard drives can be added to increase storage capacity. So, not only one hard disk drives that can be installed in your computer, but rather you can install more than one. So, that's it. That's an example of the permanent storage or the secondary storage, the hard disk drive or the hard drive. Next example is the solid state drives or the SSD. 
this is how the SSD looks like. Uh, this is very thin and this is very light and do not have a moving parts because there are no drive motors and moving parts the ssd uses far less energy than the magnetic hard drive so non-volatile so when we say non-volatile meaning it can hold data even in the absence of electricity or power non-volatile flash memory chips manage all storage on an ssd which results in faster access to data higher reliability and reduce power storage SSDs have the same form factor as magnetic hard drives and use ATA or SATA interfaces. So the cable that is being used for this uh, SSD is ATA or the SATA interface. So later on, you can see how does at a SATA interface looks like. Uh, SSDs can be installed as a replacement for magnetic drives. So in our uh, computers, uh, we opt to use the SSD because it is more faster compared to using the hard disk drive. So this time I am using in my computer uh, computers in the internet cafe that we have, even though we only have very few uh, units, but we are trying to replace the hard disk drives with the SSDs because uh, it is more faster than the hard disk drives. So let's proceed to number three, which is the optical drives. An optical drive is a storage device that uses lasers to read data on the optical media. There are three types of optical drives. We have the compact disc or the CD, digital versatile disc or the DVD, and the Blu-ray disc or the BD. A CD, DVD, and BD media can be pre-recorded, read only. And sometimes there are recordable or write ones, and there are those where you can rewrite, read and write multiple times. So that is the optical drives. Number four is the external flash drive. Um, I should uh, take into, uh, I will take this opportunity to inform all my students and to correct my students because even teachers uh, somehow could mistakenly call this flash drive into USB. So I should have to correct the term that is being used for this flash drive. Uh, please do not call this as USB, a universal serial bus. Although this flash drive is a USB type, so that is why sometimes it is mistakenly called as USB. But this is called as flash drive. So I should correct students of Ubay National Science High School, please do not call this as USB. But rather, you can call this as USB flash drive because it is a USB type uh, of connector that this flash drive will be inserted. So I'll repeat. Do not call this, this one, do not call this as USB, but rather you can call this USB flash drive or mainly flash drive. So an external flash drive is also known as thumb drive. It is a removable, removable storage device that connects to a USB port. So that is why sometimes or most often this is mistakenly called as USB because this is uh, USB type. This is um, connected to U USB port. An external flash drive uses the same type of non-volatile memory chips as solid state drives and does not require power to maintain the data. So we all know that flash drives will hold data even in the absence of power. So these drives can be accessed by the operating system in the same way that other types of drives are accessed. Okay, so let's proceed to the types of drive interfaces or what are the different connectors that are used in order to connect your hard drives or in general the secondary or permanent storage devices. Hard drives and optical drives are manufactured with different interfaces that are used to connect the drive to your computer. To install a storage drive in a computer, the connection interface on the drive must be the same 
as the controller on the motherboard. Here are some common drive interfaces. Number one is the IDE, IDE cable or the integrated drive electronics. So this is uh, how IDE looks like. It is called an advanced technology attachment or the ATA that I have mentioned earlier. Uh, it is an early drive control controller interface that connects computers and hard disk drives. Uh, sometimes optical drives and hard disk drives uses this uh, IDE cable or IDE uh, connectors. An IDE interface uses a 40 pin connector. So that's it. Next is the SATA. SATA serial uh, ATA refers to I repeat, ATA means uh, advanced technology attachment. So when we say advanced technology attachment, and uh, when we say SATA, we will just add the word serial to the dif uh, to the acronym ATA, serial advanced technology attachment. This refers to the serial version of the ATA drive controller interface. The SATA interface uses a 7-pin data connector. Um, mostly, these connectors are used for the um, SSD and some other um, hard, hard drives are using these SATA connectors. The last one is the SCSI or the Small Computer System Interface. It is a drive controller interface that can connect up to 15 drives. SCSI can connect both internal and external drives. The SCSI interface uses a 50 pin, 68 pin, or 80 pin connector. So, if you remember the very first uh, drive interface, we have the IDE, which uses 40 pin, the SATA, which uses 7 pin, and the last one, we have the SCSI uses 50 pins, 68 pin, and 80 pins, um, meaning you cannot use them in all types of uh, storage medium or media because they do not have the same pins uh, using these different drive interfaces. So I hope in this lesson you have learned a lot and this is the very first lesson that you can uh, somehow interact with your the different hardware components in your computer systems. So that's all for this video. I hope uh, you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you and once again, good day.